All right, guys, I just wanted to give my little take on this whole Debo Samuel situation that's happening with him demanding a trade about a week before the 2022 NFL draft. Will he get traded? Where will he get traded to? I just want to come out and say I think Debo is doing this to kind of make sure he gets a deal done, whether it's with the 49ers or with whatever teams that trades for him. He comes out with this trade request basically saying, listen, San Francisco, you either need to pay me right now or you need to have a deal in place with a team that will pay me and I'll be locked in. He wants his massive contract right now. And I would get, it's very interesting if you're San Francisco, because you look at it and you would think they're not paying any quarterback any big money. Uh, You know, they have Trey Lance coming along. They can pay him. But we also have to realize they're going to have to pay Nick Boza a ton of money. Uh, He's coming up, I believe, on his fifth year team option with San Francisco. So he's going to be doing a massive contract at the end of this next year. It's going to completely reset the pass rusher market. So Debo Samuel comes out and by him demanding a trade, he's saying, I'm not playing under this current contract where I only have one year left. I take on all the risk. If I get injured, you know, it's going to be very bad for my future. I want to know I'm secure. And San Francisco is probably looking at it thinking, you know, if you're San Francisco, you have to do whatever it takes, I feel like, to keep Debo Samuel. Unless he wants like $30 million per year. Okay, if he wants $30 million per year, I think it'd be pretty tough. You've got DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams at, I believe, under $30 million per year. I know Hopkins is at around 27 I think Adams is around 25 So unless he's asking for something ridiculous, based on his performance over the past few years, he's an elite receiver. Uh, you would think that San Francisco would pony up. He is a massive part of their offense. And on top of that, you've got a young quarterback in Trey Lance. You know, even if you are able to get a first round pick for Debo Samuel or whatever, you know, you want to have Debo on your team to make Trey Lance's life and to make Trey Lance's development as smooth and as easy as possible. It kind of goes back to my whole strategy. If you're going to tank draft every position but the quarterback. Like some of these teams, Houston, uh, Atlanta, draft around the quarterback, get a young nucleus, go 1-16, and and then get C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young. You have to have pieces around your quarterback. If they trade Debo Samuel for a first-round pick, you could say, well, they can draft Jameson Williams, they could draft Chris Olave late in the first round, but I would rather have Debo Samuel. I would not want a rookie receiver with virtually a rookie quarterback in what Trey Lance would be, so I would want to keep Debo Samuel. Again, a lot of this hinges on how they want their future salary cap situation to look like because they already know in their heads they are going to have to allocate a ton of funds towards Nick Boza and Trey Lance is going into a second year so you're not going to have to worry about you know you hope he becomes a franchise quarterback and then 2025, 2026, you talk about a contract extension with him. There's a lot of moving parts. Now, what teams could trade for him? Everyone keeps bringing these two teams up because they both need receiver help and they both have two picks in the back half of the first round. It's the Green Bay Packers who have a veteran superstar quarterback and they've got the 22nd and 28th overall pick and it's the Kansas City Chiefs and they've got a superstar quarterback. They've got the 29th and the 30th overall pick. There was a report I want to show you guys saying that it's unlikely the Chiefs will trade for Debo Samuel. The report says that the Chiefs are comfortable with the options available in the draft. I will say it's a slippery slope with the receivers in the draft. I've gone on record, and and this is one of, if not the most talented receiver classes uh, in in draft history. But there's some players like Sky Moore, like Christian Watson, who I really don't like. So if you're the Chiefs and you've got the 29th and 30th overall pick and you use one of those picks on a Sky Moore or Christian Watson... I think that's very underwhelming. Unfortunately, I think that's exactly what Green Bay is doing. I've seen Christian Watson mocked to Green Bay at number 22. That would be a bad pick. Aaron Rodgers needs to put his foot down. If I was Aaron Rodgers, I would say, listen, take pick number 22 and number 28. 
Use that to move up to pick number 10 or 11 and get me Garrett Wilson. That's what I would be saying if I'm Aaron Rodgers. But Aaron Rodgers is really coy. He really doesn't demand, or at least from what we've what we've seen, he really doesn't demand receivers. I mean, they traded Devontae Adams, but if I was Aaron Rodgers, I would say, look, I don't want Sky Moore. I don't want Christian Watson. Maybe Jameson Williams, but I don't even know if he's going to be there at 22. Chris Olave at this point probably isn't going to be there at 22. You're the Chiefs and you're the Packers, and you're like, we have two first-round picks. We don't need Debo Samuel. It's a slippery slope. It's a very slippery slope. And then as well, you know, what happens with DK Metcalf? These two receivers, a lot of moving parts. I have said the Seahawks should trade DK Metcalf. They don't have a legitimate quarterback. They should do a quick one-year rebuild, tank this year, and then draft either Bryce Young or CJ Strout really early next year while also getting back multiple first-round assets for DK Metcalf, who you're going to have to pay a ton of money to anyways. And you can trade Tyler Lockett on top of that. But that's another story. Right now, it doesn't look like, at least according to the reports, that DK Metcalf is going to be traded. But if they get hit with an offer they can't re refuse right before the draft, they're going to trade DK Metcalf. They're not in a position right now to contend. They don't have a quarterback. The Seahawks don't have a quarterback, but that's a whole no different thing, different situation with DK Metcalf. We're talking about Debo Samuel. We're talking about the Packers. And maybe, I think, honestly, if I was the Packers, I don't know what it would take to trade for DK, uh, or for Debo Samuel, but you got to throw him an offer like the 29th overall pick and maybe a second rounder. The reason DK Metcalf doesn't have a you know crazy amount of value, it's due to the contract situation. You're going to immediately have to pay DK Metcalf a boatload of money. And that's not an attractive option for teams. They don't like, you know, using that much money on the receiver position. Not to say deep, it, it, not to say it's a waste of money. Debo's a great receiver, but it's just, it's not like Debo Samuels, you know, has three years left on a very affordable contract. He's due a new contract and he's due a massive contract. That's why his value might not be multiple first round picks. But if I'm Green Bay, I'm like, listen, I will give, could you imagine Green Bay? trading one of their first round picks and then also getting a Jamison Williams in the draft or getting an Alec Pierce in the second round of the draft. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. I would 100% offer a late first round pick. The team that can really throw a monkey wrench into this, I guess any team could. If a team gets desperate enough, they want Debo, he's available for a first round pick. Any team could get desperate, but the New York Jets. We have seen the Jets. They're very aggressive. They offered the number 10 overall pick for DK Metcalf straight up. The Seahawks didn't accept it. They had a massive trade on the table for Tyreek Hill. He could have went to New York. He chose to go to Miami. The New York Jets are saying, they're putting their foot down and saying, we are not going to let Zachary Wilson fail. Because we, we didn't surround him with weapons. They're saying we're getting an elite wide receiver one way or another. So then the question comes, do they get desperate enough to throw out maybe the number 10 overall pick for Debo Samuel? Would San Francisco entertain that? Would you have to include a second rounder? Would they give up a second rounder? These are all conversations that need to be had between these teams. And right now they don't have to have them because the draft is still six days away. But eventually, these conversations will happen, and the New York Jets could throw a monkey wrench into this, and then they'd also have to talk to Debo Samuel. How do you feel about resigning with us? We're not going to just trade a first-round pick for you if you're going to bolt in free agency, and obviously, Debo Samuel is going to want to have that contract. Debo's made it clear he is not playing under this current contract. So San Francisco either needs to trade him, or they need to sign him to a massive extension. That is the deal. I think San Francisco ends up ponying up and giving him a contract extension at around $26 million per year. This trade request was basically Debo saying, these extension talks are going nowhere. I want to kickstart them, and this is my threat, and I'm going to use the media to do it, and I'm going to demand a trade. So listen, you can either extend me and we can work something out, or you need to trade me to a team that will extend me. I'm not playing under this contract. I don't want to risk getting injured when I have a massive uh, payday coming of at least 23, maybe 24, 25 million dollars per year. So 
We all knew this could happen. I honestly didn't expect him to demand a trade. I thought this thing would have gotten done, but San Francisco seems to be balking a little bit on the idea of investing this much into Debo Samuel. So that's the situation with Debo. Another quick report I wanted to talk about. Uh, the Bills GM said he's not opposed to taking uh, taking a running back in the first round. I have envisioned it. Brace Hall to the Buffalo Bills. Their offense would be ridiculous. Trade Zach Moss. Trade Devin Singletary. Who cares? Give Brees Hall 25 touches a game in that offense with a Stephon Diggs. With... Josh Allen, amazing. That is the perfect fit. You couldn't even name a better fit than Brees Hall on Buffalo. They need a legit running back. Zach Moss is not good enough. Nothing against the kid. I like Utah. I understand, but he's not good enough. Devin Singletary, maybe a third down back, maybe, but he's not good enough. Get a legitimate running back. We, you know, everyone talks about you can't waste a first round pick on a running back. Well, if it's pick number 27, I think that's doable. Brace Hall showed out at the Combine. He's literally Nick Chubb 2.0. He's the best running back in the draft. And I like Kenneth Walker. And I like Kenneth Walker, guys. Don't get me wrong. But Brace Hall is another level. I see Brees Hall getting picked late first round. Kenneth Walker going probably early to mid-second. Those two running backs far and away. Uh, the best. This is not a deep running back class. There's really only those two running backs that I think can be viable starters in the NFL at this point. Zach Charbonnet was another guy I loved, but you know he returned back to UCLA, so he will be in the draft next year. So that's just an update on Brees Hall. I'm envisioning it. I've said it for like a month now. Could you imagine the Bills taking Brees Hall? But guys, the big thing with Debo Samuel. You've got some teams that need receivers that have veteran superstar quarterbacks like the Packers, like the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. You've got two first-round picks. If I, I, I'm, I'm giving up a first-round pick for Debo Samuel. I'm giving up probably a first and second-round pick if it's a late first-round pick. The question is how desperate do the Jets get and would Debo Samuel feel comfortable re-signing with the Jets in the event they were to trade for him? There's a lot of stuff going on. I also will tell you guys, the DK Metcalf thing, it's still a story. It's still a story. It may not be big right now. The reports may say, well, he's resigning. They're going to throw him an offer. But right now, I mean, I could see Seattle getting hit with an offer they can't refuse by the New York Jets. The Jets already offered the number 10 overall pick straight up for DK Metcalf. And they left the Jets off of the table, which... I don't know. I, I would have entertained that. I would have asked for a second and maybe a third. And if they would have said it, I would have traded DK away because I need future assets and you're getting the 10th overall pick. That is a really good pick. And this is a very deep draft. You could just draft Garrett Wilson. You could dra to completely replace him. So that is an interesting situation. The Jets want a superstar receiver for Zach Wilson. We know that. They're obsessed with it. And they will do whatever they can to get that. We'll see if they get it, guys. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.